going there. Don't come in here. It's a bad dog. That's me. Is it? <laughs> Tracy Lee's landowner is at her wit's end. Nice to see you. After some yes, squatters yes. moved in and refused to leave. We need yes, to yes, yes. talk about these squatters. He has been here around two years. And you've asked and asked for them to be gone. Yes. Done everything you know what you're doing. You've asked and pleaded and done everything you can. I have called the police. I have called um, the councillors. No and, one to help. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully, with a little bit of my background, we might be able to do something. So should we go and have a look? Yes, please. OK, let's go. So is there much mess going on? Yes, they're shitting on the paddock. Oh, no! Oh, no! The act of defecating in a field you're not even paying rent on is beyond outrageous. Tracy can't help but notice beer bottles, junk, even a toilet bowl. OK. Yeah. At Good Girls Property Management in Christchurch... Oh, my God! All the furniture! <laughs> all optimism is extinguished. It's a bead. Look at, oh, look, there's chairs and the stools. Oh, Jesus. The naughty ex-tenants have left the driveway like a garageless garage sale. It is foul. Oh, look, we've got a toasty machine around here. If the outside looks like this... Are you ready? I'm ready. The inside is guaranteed to be the same or worse. Oh, you can smell all that. Peru has catalogued thousands of nasal nasties in her long career. It's quite a large house, too. It stings. But consulting her database of olfactory offences, she's drawn a blank on this one. What is the smell? Watch that vacuum cleaner there. I don't know what that was used for. Oh. It's not in the kitchen. Mm. It's not coming from the lounge. Oh, you can smell it. But a tractor beam of trauma Tech, no, kid's not interested. Points directly to the bathroom. What's oh, it gonna... Oh, Leading Raywin to a shower stall shambles. Ugh. Oh, she's not good round the edges. Come on! I like this. If they thought the shower was the source of such sensory sorcery, there's a bowl of abomination in the bog. Oh! oh don't you go in there. Don't come in here. Is it bad? A-grade property manager Tracy Lee is assisting landowner Mead, who's trying to evict a group of squatters. Not only have they been here for nay on two years, they're much bigger than the landlady and do not speak English. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, here's your squatters' five horses. Yeah. While Tracy's relieved the squatters are only horses and all the junk is just Mead having a clear out, they belong to a man who made a gentleman's agreement to graze a couple here for just a short while. So when do they move in? Uh, more than two years, now. Nah. Did, did five horses just arrive, or...? Um, actually, the number of the horses increased. OK. Without no fiving us. OK. Yeah. Tracy's not just a property manager, she's active in equestrian circles, where she's been hearing strange rumours of late. So this one was born here? After making a few calls, Tracy is able to tell Mead she's been subject to a classic country scam. It turns out he's quite well known in the area, and this isn't the first time he's done this. So I had people saying, oh, we think we know who he is, he's been at our place, is his name blah, is this the behaviour? And I've gone, yes, yeah. So we, we are dealing with kind of an endemic problem. Tracy plans to crack the whip on this situation for the sake of her client and her unwanted, clearly unloved guests. I mean, for a quality of a horse fence, that's not ideal. <laughs> this place is not suitable for horses. Um, and they've had no water to the troughs, so they've been going into that creek, which is now drying out for water. They've got little cuts and scratches. <laughs> it was just never intended to be for horses. While this pony predicament is much more complicated than a standard human eviction, Tracy loves a challenge. Beautiful. Yeah. Step one, issue a 14-day removal notice. Step two, find out how to move horses in a hurry. Luckily, Tracy's friend Philippa has just turned up to help. So, have you seen the squatters? I have. What can we do to get rid of them if this guy ignores his 14-day notice? Now, I know the legal process, and then the court will say, OK, you have the right to get rid of the horses, but what do you do with five horses? 
Well, because they're all, all different ages, you've got a little bit of a problem there. So you're going to have to probably get someone that specialises in dealing with breaking in horses and young horses and trying to get them on a truck. The only way that you could probably reach out to these people is through Facebook is a very good source. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of equestrian pages on there. For years, people have wondered what social media could be used for. Maybe now is its time. Tracy has a date with her keyboard and a computer screen to update her status. In Albany, you can almost hear the clatter of A-grade property manager Tracy Lee's keyboard as she smashes Facebook feeds, Instagram and even Neighbourly, looking for a home for five unloved horses. I've just been sent a notice. But Tracy's highly productive workflow has been interrupted for a moment. Yet another problem has reared its ugly head. If we make it about one-ish, I've had five squatter horses, and now I have another squatter of a different type. This time, the squatting is north of Oriwa, where a vehicle has been parked up for months at the home of one of Tracy's tenants. Going through Oriwa, need your wits about you driving through here. What do they call it? The newly wed and the nearly dead? At the property, Tracy is confronted by a nearly dead camper van. OK, it's gumboot time. And long-suffering tenant Wendy, who's had to look at the arse end of it for months and months from her kitchen window. I had this elderly guy turn up on the doorstep and ask here. me... Yeah. Yeah, it was like October, November last year. Yeah. And asked me if he could leave it here until after Christmas when everything opened up again because he wanted to get some work done on it. He dropped it off. I saw him once after he dropped it off, and that was just before Christmas. And he said, just popped in, said, uh, is it still OK? I said, yep, you're still planning to come get it. And he never showed up again, and I haven't now, seen him. Now, you've got his phone number. What's his name? His name was... Well, he told me his name was... Yeah, and when you ring his phone when number... You ring the phone, it's... Mistaken or double identities, Tracy Lee's seen them all before. This property manager loves a good mystery. I'm Mary Poppins today. Cluedo's one of her favourite games and she's about to roll the dice. What if it's locked? Kind of. I suppose that's a way of securing something. The camper van's condition and contents reveal a number of leads. Grass in the windows, a smashed windscreen, no red joe, and a door handle that falls off. Its owner is most likely transient, male, hopelessly disorganised, with a bump on his forehead. But this property manager has already formed a plan. Next day, the sun's out, and so is Tracy Lee, complete with flyers to put up around the village. First stop, community notice board. Poor lonely little camper van. Hi there. I'm Tracy. You don't own a camper van like this? No. You don't know anyone who does? No. Every random stranger, every random car, every random camper van gets a flyer. Someone must know something. You don't know a who owns a camper van that is no longer suitable for camping? No. No. Can't see any. hunt for the origin of an unidentified odour has led Good Girls property managers Prue and Raywin to a first floor bathroom and the toilet itself. Oh, just get, get these on. Oh. Is it bad, darling? Is it... We got DNA readings. Hey, but they've left a plunger. Oh! The contents of the bowl resembles a recently unearthed torpedo from World War II. Oh. But this marine is getting court-martialed for crimes against porcelain. Shall we check the extractor? Do it. <laughs> the extractor fan complains bitterly about having to process the stench. Oh, she's not. She's not happy. No. Whatever was being extracted. Is it clean? I just... Or no. <laughs> no, no, no. 
no, not good. Prue may be saying no, but next door, she thinks someone's been saying yes over and over again. This is a mattress. Those they are had, shunting They must have marks. had something in bed that they were drinking, because it's halfway down the wall. So there's a bit of liquid along with the shunting stains. More than likely. <laughs> oh. It's not just the wall that's been taking a hammering. Prue notices suspicious stains on the floor. Let's just say it's toothpaste proof. But sticky curtains. We have this lovely effect. And alleged sex toys in a bedroom cupboard. Oh, what's that? An extra marital <laughs> All paint a picture. Fifty shades of gross. There must have been a hell of a lot of heat in here. Because look, even that's sticking. <coughs> I don't think they'll be getting any of their bond back. No, they won't. It's going to take a week for a cleaner to actually clean. But it's not just Janola and Jeff required. Shockingly, a critical piece of the dwelling's infrastructure yeah. is gone. Do you mind shutting the door while you're there? Yeah. Uh, do you think? Home renovations. Time has officially run out for the mysterious owner of the derelict camper van parked on Tracy Lee's tenant's driveway. I've just contacted Wendy, the camper van's still there, nothing's worked. The internet hasn't worked, um, the phone hasn't worked, legal process hasn't worked, old fashioned walking the streets has not worked with the flyers and the posters. Um, so Mr. Camper Van, Mr. Trespasser is going to go off to where old camper vans go. He's going to go off to the camper van yard, I guess. Tracy's going up to personally oversee the removal of the camper's corpse. It's all part of the A-grade service. So that's our squatting camper van. Okay. Do you think you can move it? Yeah, I think we're going to move it. Hope yeah. it doesn't fall apart no. when you try to tow it. I'm a lot stronger than I look. Thank you so much. Well done. One derelict camper van down, just five squatting horses to go. Thank you, Mega Car Parts and Collections. Finally, finally. A good girl's property vacated by some unruly male students has been left cluttered, smelly and dirty. Those are shunting They must have marks. had something in bed that they were drinking. But while these breaches of tenancy can easily be rectified, a missing kitchen door can't. Hey, do you mind shutting the door while you're there? Yeah. Uh, These are as scarce as hen's teeth in the post-quake city. So Prue's rung the lads to find out where it's gone. So the burglar came with a Phillips head screwdriver and removed the door and took nothing else. Due to the citywide door shortage, it's been alleged burglars are surgically extracting these precious items. Judging by the state of the other doors in the house, Prue thinks it more likely the ex-tenants wrecked it and chucked it out. It's enough to make a property manager sick. <laughs> there, that looks like vomit to me. Oh, this was yeah. the party area. Raywin suspects it was a stag party. Do you think they might have uh, killed something? Yeah, there's a dead weed whacker. And then I think they lost the weed whacker, did they? Do you think? I, I reckon. <laughs> Prue's seen enough. All the cleaning. It's going to take And the, the rubber stumping alone. Yeah. It'll take the cleaner over a week. Now to formulate a plan and drill down into how everything went so terribly wrong. Dreadful behaviour, isn't it? Really. Mm. It's time for the girls to close one of the only doors left on the sorry saga. Yeah, all locked. Good. And head back to the office. Good, we can get our people now. Tracy Lee is back at the Auckland lifestyle block inhabited by squatting horses. So we'll go and catch him. After days of posting notices and what's fashionably called reaching out, she's hooked up with horsey types who found them new homes. I've trespassed, I've given notices, I've put notices in the newspaper, I've contacted people who know him and said, please, please, could you contact me? And the owners have had the horses here for over 12 months. And they look at their farm, it's just trashed. Um, so thanks to you, they've all got lovely homes. 
The plan is simple. Move horses onto truck, leave. Look at me, active wear, active wear. I'm moving horses in my active wear. But Tracy knows it never quite works out like that. So we're using bribery and corruption. As so often happens in property management, these tenants are not going quietly. The first horse clearly suspects it's going to be put up in a motel unit. The girls work quickly, knowing the absentee owner of the animals could turn up and start throwing carrots or a wobbly at any moment. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Luckily, horse number two is all on board with the rehoming process, and before Tracy can say bot fly, both animals are fetlocked and loaded, ready to move to their brand new accommodation. So we're going to take him home so that he's in stable and I'm there. And I can do that. And then he's being, he's being um, moved to a home in Dargaville, which is like a sanctuary. Oh, yay, that's so amazing. Okay. Such good work. Everyone deserves to have a little stability in their lives, especially property managers, and especially Tracy Lee. I hope someone does that for me when I retire, get a vet to me and get my teeth done and put me in a beautiful pasture. <laughs> that would be nice. Good Girls property managers Prue and Raywin are cock a hoop this morning because they've been told the disgusting doorless dwelling has been reinstated to its former glory. One just looking that it's clean, new curtains, garden has been done, so all sorted. Last time the front entrance looked like a second hand shop, now the coast and the clutter is clear. So all the rubbish has gone from out here. Which is good. Fabulous. Because there was shite all across. No rubbish in here. If the inside's as good as the outside, it should be a joy to behold. So let's have a look. Miss Raywood, point out these items. It already smells better. Oh, this was the moss-riddled shower. The shower smells wonderful, fresh and clean. And look at the fan. Anybody using the toilet cubicle from now on is going to want to stay in there forever. You've got this lead. Is this to a family or students? No, to four young ladies this time. Nice. Which I think will be much nice. And let's open the stolen door. Ta da! We actually have a door here now. You draw a place Can I door? Said door after the burglar came with his Phillips head screwdriver. Mm. But as you can see, we've got new curtains. Pro. Well, I'm delighted by that. The cleaners have also removed the piles of belongings from sandwich presses to stools by renting a jumbo-sized skip that came with a jumbo hire cost. So the total cost of fixing this up um, was $2,000. In $800. But the tenants do want their bond back. <laughs> and their bond was $1,800, so we'll be going to court for $1,000 more than likely. Oh, mother of God, look at it. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's unbelievable, isn't it? So we're heading to a property that's in Kilbarney. Uh, we are going there to do a final inspection for a tenant that's just moved out. Ripped mattresses, stained mattresses, broken heaters, broken guitars, old laptops. This is just all just trash. This is all just trash that they haven't wanted to take away. No. Oh, well, let's see what else is here. Adam can't believe the nerve of these tenants. They haven't even bothered to dump their rubbish in a public reserve or on a quiet country road. Oh, well, they've cleared this room, but uh, haven't done any cleaning at all. They've uh, spilt teas, coffees, a bit of food on the, on the wall that's just gone mouldy. It's definitely not ideal, not something I want to be dealing with. But Jared's here, and so is his 12 years of experience in property management dealing with carnage just like this. Microwave's not on the chattels list, is it? No, it's not. Kids' toys, pegboard, boxes, kind of all the usual stuff. But if Adam thinks this twisted treasure hunt is over, he's gravely mistaken. In the kitchen, Jared finds dishes. Some with dinner still attached. They haven't even done the dishes. 
Oh, yuck. What's this? Is this a fondue set? If only it were. This machine is a devious device for making candy floss, but there's no sugarcoating the fact neither Jared nor Adam want it. I think that'll be going in the, in the rubbish. The rest of the house features a rancid rainbow of health hazards. Toxic black mould. They've um, never actually ventilated or cleaned the, cleaned the place. Toxic white mould. Not even sure what it is. And the stomach churning stench of old damp laundry. These tenants didn't even separate their colours. But out the back of the property, what looks like a shed is actually a landfill wrapped in a shed. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, God. Look. An out of control drunk driver has ploughed through the front fence of this rental property and smashed into the house itself glancing off a tenant's car prior to impact. Jesus. Look at this. Gosh, he's hit it in some force. Straight the way through. All the trees taken out. Oh. Christchurch City Council won't like that. Three precious council rubbish bins now need replacing. But even more disturbingly, a passenger from the offending vehicle was alleged to be a toddler eating junk food prior to the incident. And this will be from the, the person that did it? Yes, that was the child's. That was the child's nutritious meal. Apparently there was milkshake right through the car. Chips. The driver clearly had such a love for fast food, he tried to open up his very own drive through complete with drinks dispenser. Yeah, there's water gushing out here. here it is. OK. Here. Right. So let's pop on in and have a little peeky boo. Oh, mother of God, look at it. Oh, look at this. Oh! Inside, the house is a crack up. But luckily, the driver didn't bring the house down. It's right the way up here. Yep, it's cracked up to the roof. It is. Oh, and blown it? this wall out. It's all bowed. The cost of the repair could be in the thousands, but it's the emotional cost to the new tenants that Prue's really shaken about. Thank God no one was in bed. I know, it's lucky. So you only came back to the aftermath, and it's your car. Yeah, unfortunately. The good girls will not allow their brand new tenants to have a bad first flatting experience on their watch. No going back to mum and dad's today. As of now, Prue and Linda will be mum and mum. Can you help me with it? That would be your first time renting. <sighs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? When, mm -mm. when she started telling me about the stuff, God, I said, what a I drama, and I only wanted to paint a table today. But if Prue thinks she's painting anything this weekend, she can think again. Another desperate client has called with a complaint about an insurer, turning the tables on an agreement over the concreting of his rental's driveway. Trust property managers Jared and Adam have gone to conduct an exit inspection they thought would be a formality, but wasn't. Oh, yuck. What's this? Jared knows the key to leading a successful operation is to deploy his assets sensibly. This is heaps more stuff the, than we were expecting. Call Miles, get him over here. If you want to start just documenting. Miles, the maintenance man, is going to do some of the heavy lifting whilst Adam, with his experience in car sales, will photograph and catalogue the items for tribunal evidence. I'll show you what we never yet started on. This is the worst of the, the place. All of this is going to be going in the skip. This shed is more like a tenancy TARDIS, testing the very laws of physics. No matter how much comes out, there always seems to be more. Before long, Jared and Miles can see the floor, and they can almost smell lunchtime. Oh, pies. But all Adam can smell is hours of work. This is my first time dealing with something this big. Like, yep. This is a lot of crap. Generally don't get too many houses where it's this sort of extreme. <sighs> yeah. 
Definitely a good skip bin fill here, that's for sure. Whilst Jared works, he sees dollar signs mounting up for the landlord. This will fit in the skip a little bit easier. The belongings aren't good enough for the charity shop, so they're only good enough for the skip bin. He calls the ex-tenants for an explanation as to why they left such an expensive mess. Quite a bit of uh, rubbish to dispose of. They declare the rubbish was there when they moved in. As Jared took the rental over mid-tenancy, he's got to prove it is theirs. Just having a look to see if I can find any uh, stuff with the tenant's name on it. None with the, uh, the main tenant's name on it. That's a bit of a bugger. But here and now is where Adam's long experience on the car yard pays dividends. While Jared goes to get a feed for the boys, more furniture that's been left behind. He intends to close this deal. A rare weekend off has been turned upside down for good girl Prue Morrell. Straight the way through. A smashed up house. Right. And now a driveway disaster threatened to consume the entire weekend when she should be consuming GNTs and romance novels. This is our new driveway. After finally settling a six-year stoush with his insurer to get an earthquake-affected driveway replaced, the amount the landlord originally claimed is nothing like the current cost of getting it done, leaving his tenant high, dry and unable to park his car in the garage. So if I teeter in my steel-capped high heel, now we've got to do the mesh. Well, this is not going to be simple. What does one wear to navigate this? So you can see here, we got to here. This is the new paths in the beginning of the driveway, but this leg of the operation down here, we have a bit of constipation. The constipation comes from the bowels of the insurance company, who believe they have met their obligations. Prue, the landlord and the tenant are straining to believe it. So my owner's got to try and come up with the rest because apparently the price of the laying of this has doubled in six years. Doubled. With the tenant, he has been amazing. He's such a dear young man. But it was very frustrating for him. Prue's task is to bring the interests of the insurer and the homeowner closer together and broker a resolution. Easier said than done. In the capital city of Wellington, whoops, it's all hands to the pump as three quarters of the entire trust property management team, Jared, Miles and Adam, have descended on a Kilburnie rental left in a total pigsty. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Adding insult to injury, the ex-tenants reckon the rubbish was there when they moved in. I don't think they uh, are going to come back for any of this stuff anyway. So while Jared's off to buy some pies for the lads, he's not buying the ex-tenants' flaky story. We know from our discussions with the owner, the property was immaculate. The last tenant he had in there was wonderful. Um, he didn't have to do any cleaning between tenancies because it had been left in such great condition. We've come on board, but we don't have a lot of documentation about the starting point. Uh, it just gives me the impression that um, they just don't really care. Back at the bomb site, given the rapidly developing situation, Trust Business Development Manager Mitch has turned up. Knowing intimately the local rental shortages, he can't believe his eyes. Clearly can only be done with the knowledge that oh, someone else's problem. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be ours. Why? Why shouldn't it be yours? What's their thinking? It's just like, oh, this is not going to cost me anything. I can just move out. No harm, no foul. Meanwhile, Adam hasn't eaten anything or found anything linking the rubbish with the ex-tenants. Yeah, and just more... Uh plates and stuff around here. But he has found one thing he's always wanted. A free guitar. But just when he's about to give up, 
it's definitely not ideal. Adam finds a family portrait of the tenants sandwiched between layers of clutter. Quite a lot of photos and stuff. He hasn't had his pie, but Adam's swimming in gravy. This is going straight to the tribunal. Awesome. Fantastic. A bit of a boost today. That will mean we can uh, keep progress uh, moving quickly. I've just brought it out here and dumped it and uh, thought it would be our problem and they'd get away with it. With documentation in hand, Adam can finally join the cleanup, which is already on its victory lap. Jared changes the locks just in case the ex tenants return, and as they say in property management, as one door shuts, another one opens. It's Miles' time to shine, to shine every last corner of this house ready for new tenants. From what we can see, he'll be here about uh, two or three days straight just cleaning this place before we start looking at improvements. After removing a skip load of useless belongings and three days cleaning... Oh, yuck. Look how rancid they look. Associate Miles has given Jared the all clear to go and see a genuine Wellington Phoenix risen from the ashes. First item to check off, a perfectly working front door lock. Oh, let's check out how this place is scrubbed up. Oh, this is looking great. Last time we were in this room, you could hardly move. There was uh, old uh, beds and furniture that had been left behind. Jared's team don't just clean, they zhuzh. Little details like um, changing light fittings really helps lift the place. Some small, simple things that we've done. New curtain rail, shower curtain. Um, new toilet seat as well. Gives a really nice feel for new tenants coming in. Big change in here um, was really done with, with the floor. New lino has really lifted this place. But the other thing that took a lot of time was just a really big clean, making it a, uh, feel like a kitchen that tenants want to live in and be proud of. And the backyard is a sight to behold. The rotten old shed has been demolished as it wasn't worth fixing, the lawns are done and there's no trash anywhere. Nice not uh, having the monstrosity of, uh, of a decrepit shed in the, in the back corner. Uh, just uh, clearing that out, the place feels a lot safer. The new tenants could have a sand pit, a barbecue area, or if they're really stuck for ideas, a mini petanque court. Feeling really good about the place. We've checked out the inside and the yard. And we've had a, a really quick turnaround. I'm pretty hopeful that we'll be getting some uh, good quality tenants in here quickly for the owner. The old tenants will have some hefty cleaning bills to pay and they'll need to come up with that long overdue rent. Prue's at the property that was bowled into by a drunk driver. Initial thoughts of I'd like to get my hands on the little drunken sod that did it. After surveying the damage, her favourite tradie Bruce has put down his favourite book to come out and assist the good girls clean up the mess. So, gouge here. Yep. That car had its nose facing the drive. Oh, wow. Cuffed round here, pushed that back there yeah. and went into the house. Gosh, what a minute. Took all this out. And this is quite precarious. Yeah. Yep. Here, no, obviously. Bruce has a rolling brief to do whatever he deems necessary to make this property functional again. Starting with the all-important receptacle for retail flyers. Oh, I'll just try and fit this letterbox back on. Just a few days later, Bruce has been given the word Bruce has fixed up the flat to within an inch of its life. Prue plus Bruce equals Spruce. So now we've had the repairs done, and it's one of the tenants' 21st, so we're going to pick up a cake for him on the way, just to say thanks while I whip through and just make sure everything's been done to satisfaction. So let's go and see how well they've done. The repair of his first ever rental will be all the cake this 21-year-old needs. The cake Prue's bought will be the cherry on top, especially when it comes with flowers too. Greetings! Happy 21st, darling. So, do you mind if we have a quick peek at the boot to make sure that wall is good? Yeah, yeah. So this was stoved right in. Yes. 
and all the carpet was ripped back, so that's all been repaired. It was. The tradies have done an excellent job restoring the interior of the bedroom to its pre-crash glory. While outside, you'd never know what happened. It's like the tenants didn't know what hit them. Oh, good. Job done. Job done. A few days later, even more good news. Prue's other client's driveway dilemma has been resolved. Here is the driveway. The concrete's poured, cured and ready to drive on. I can walk. And lie on. Like that other well-loved and orange-haired individual, Prue knows the art of the deal and closing the deal. The landlord, the tenant and the good girls have come up trumps. It's an amazing thing, amazing. Hi, we're here for the inspection. Um, no, there's no notice about it. Yeah, there was. We popped no, it in the cat door. Can't just walk in here. We can actually, we've got the letter. Prue Morrell and her trusty Lieutenant Michelle are trying to assist a client slash friend who wants to evict this tight walleted tenant. Anybody home? Prue quickly concludes that if the tenant is home, she's not coming to the door. Now we'll go through the cat door. Well, in Prue's hot little hand is documentation advising this outlaw tenant there's a new sheriff in town. The good girls are now in charge of the property and her days are numbered. I'm just going to be clever as the owner was if you want to open that little cat door and take a photo that they're inside that we have delivered as well. And that's and that all date, date, time, date and time. In Prue's experience, the chances of this tenant going quietly are slim to none. But regardless, process will be followed and the good girls will return in 14 days to inspect the property, with or without the tenant's permission. At Holly Joss Property Management, Holly reduces overhead so she can pass those savings on to her clients, landlords and tenants alike. Today, two of those tenants are in a bit of a tight spot and need Holly's help. So I had a call from uh, my tenants. They moved into a house about three, four weeks ago. Um, the landlord was due to do some tidying up of the place. Um, outside in particular, they, uh, this, this couple, my tenants, import houses from Poland, which they sell, and they needed the back section to put the houses on. And there's a lot of um, old bits of tin, metal, just general waste that, that needs to be um, removed, and that hasn't been removed yet. Holly's tenants desperately want some action in their back section. So Holly's off to see what it's going to take to get this straightened out. A boat moored in the access lane is a clear sign of clutter, as is the car on a trailer combo. So this car here uh, was actually around the, the back, not on a trailer. It's got a current uh, to, well, it did have current rego and, and woof, and the owner said that it was um, drivable. But as you can see, it's on a trailer, sort of stuck outside the garaging now. I mean, there's stuff here which really isn't in the way, um, but as you can see, you know, it's just junk that's been collected over the years. Um, and we've got more in this paddock here. You can see a couple of the uh, houses that have already been delivered. The houses Holly's tenants import from Poland arrive fully assembled and ready to live in. They just need a large, clear area for storage before reciting. Well, they were due to get um, an another one here um, and another couple of cabins over here. So they just wanted some more of the stuff cleared. We have some bits of metal sticking out of the ground over here. Um, we've got some nice sort of classic cars here, all rusted out. But actually, even the cars are full of stuff. Look, we've got drawers units, mattresses, this container was supposed to go, all of this rubbish here was supposed to go, and all of this rubbish over here was supposed to go. So this whole area was supposed to be cleared. As the payers of substantial rent, Holly's tenants feel the landlord's using their place as his own personal junkyard for storing everything, including a long drop lav. Mm. <laughs> Holly's tenants have certainly been caught short. With two more houses due in a matter of hours and nowhere to put them, Holly's challenge is to find somewhere ASAP. Prue and Michelle are dealing with a tenant who's taken advantage of a landlord's good nature and decided paying rent is for suckers. They might. 
<laughs> oh, a treat in store. After not seeing so much as a dime in four weeks, the landlord was outrageously barred from entering his own house by the tenant. Enter the good girls. Right. Let's do this. It's off to the address to gain legal access to inspect the inside for the owner. Hello! If the tenant thinks she can hide again this time, she's making a serious mistake. The front door is wide open. Perhaps sensing the game is up, the tenant comes forward. Hi, right, we're here for the inspection. Um, no, there's no notice about the... Yeah, there was. We popped no, it in the cat door. We can actually, we've got the letter, it's lovely. No, you can't. And you yes. Can take your camera out too. But do you want to come and talk to us? No. no. Well, so I bet you don't, because you're so behind in the rent. Um, and you're smoking in the house. And? Oh, yes. So we're from we the good girls manager. and we left you a letter and, no, and the cat door. Through the cat door, we photographed it. Door. Oh, He's given I it know. to us to manage. When? In the last two and days. In the house, so which is really dangerous. Um, oh, we are managing. We are man yeah, God. Despite being locked out of the house itself, there's ample evidence of renting misdemeanors in the sunroom to warrant an escalation. Beautiful evidence of smoking. Oh, yeah, and a few drugs and a bit of. Yeah, lovely. Like a pair of jazzed up Jack Russells, Prue and Michelle are determined to get inside. A little bit of rubbish. So they sniff round the back. That's where we put the notices, are they gone? Yep. Oh, yes. She's gone. Then. Oh, good. We're in. Oh, she's locked that one. It looks like their attempt to gain access has been thwarted yet again. But the duo's frustrations are temporarily put to one side as they're distracted by a horrific stench coming from the laundry. Oh, she's bottler. Oh, bloody hell. Jesus. The floor of the actual toilet has been drenched in an evil sludge of urine and feces. She's minging out here. Yeah. If this is what the outhouse looks like, goodness knows what the in-house looks like. We'll go back and let them know that we've tried to court. Reek the f Even if we'd managed to get that door open, there was nothing that we could have no. done. We couldn't have done the inspection with that kind of... Animosity. With no civilised or ladylike way of entering the house, it's off to the courts to evict this toilet trashing, smoking, rent retentive tenant once and for all. Tracy Lee from A-Grade Property Management is heading to Northcote Point and one of her favourite properties occupied by a group of young 20-somethings. Hello, hello. Tracy Lee here. Anyone home? Naturally, the tenants are already at work, leaving Trace to do her work, happy in the knowledge this should be a routine inspection. But it's not. Oh, shit. Like what this is. That looks like a burn. That looks like something's been charged there and caught fire. Or maybe it's a really oddly shaped heater. Scorch marks from an untended heater could only result from one highly distracted individual. The problem with these sorts of things are is if we don't have a piece of carpet to patch, it's a whole room. An enclosed balcony also draws Tracy's attention. This has clearly been neglected for months. See how wet this is? This just isn't being aired enough. And the deck out there hasn't been washed or salted. It looks minor, but in a year's time, somebody might slip on it and hurt themselves, and it won't be minor. There's a dehumidifier over there that perhaps needs to be used a bit more, but it doesn't take much to ventilate an area. It doesn't take much to open a door or window, and definitely I'll, I'll want that cleaned. This house may have sea views, but the views Tracy sees are not up to par. Outside, garden maintenance has long been forgotten. The gardens here, I would probably recommend putting one of my gardeners through and charging the tenants. How on earth did a group of previously faultless tenants let standards slip to this degree? Downstairs in the adult rumpus area, it all makes sense. So this is the games room that built their own little bar. They have little ping pong trophies. They've got darts. Beer pong, table tennis, mini golf and golf. These tenants are spending too much time at play and not enough time at work. Housework. I'm going to sneak in and put one down for gardening. 
Tracy Lee's reluctant to do this, but she's going to have to write them a 14-day tidy-up notice. The good girls Prue and Michelle have been to court in a bid to officially evict a tenant who refuses to leave a property she hasn't paid rent for in over a month. Anybody home? She's prevented the owner and now the new property managers from lawfully entering the house. Did you try the other door? Yeah. But two days later, there's been a breakthrough. We went to the Tenancy Tribunal. They were um, really concerned that we hadn't had access to the house. That's the big issue. Um, so she wavered the 48 hours notice, which is a big thing. We've only ever had that twice. We could have got them out on Friday. We have left it till this morning. We've had a text message asking for it to be delayed till three. We are going there now for three. We are. Uh, but we do believe she hasn't left. I, well, I feel a little bit. And rubbish. Something's telling me it's not good down there. No, it isn't mm. good down there. That uneasy feeling might have something to do with this note the tenant left the former landlord. We presume these bitches are us, as we're the only bitches I know around here. Is that right? <laughs> I'd say so. Approaching the address, it's clear the tenant is still very much in residence, despite the generous full three days to pack up and leave. Pack nothing. It's also clear she's not happy to see the good girls. Her screaming. The tenant is stressed because she's got a lot to do. There are belongings everywhere. Dirty dishes. She took the carpet down here too burning. Suspicious burn marks on the carpet. And the smell of ciggies is overpowering. <laughs> Equally disappointing are the pillowcases which do not match the duvet or sheets. With a family friend arriving in a four-door sedan to take away three bedrooms worth of furniture, a kitchen full of appliances and crockery and a lounge worth of couches, Prue's aware this won't be the quickest eviction she's undertaken. Well, part one is over, really. Mm. Because it's still the beginning of the next, isn't it? Which is? Which is? Clean up. The clean up, the damage, the toilet replacement. <laughs> the whole toilet replacement, like the walls as well. Yeah. Mm. And apparently they'll be back tomorrow. We'll wait and see. Holly's on her way to a new property she's located overnight for a couple of Polish house importers. Yeah, happy outcomes for the tenants, definitely. Yeah, we found somewhere else for their houses and they're happy. And uh, yeah, a few hiccups, but pretty much all went smoothly. And just in time too. A couple of the couple's houses are imminent. Sort of come to crunch time where these houses are, are sitting at the port in Auckland and they're waiting for delivery, but the tenants can't actually get their, um, their houses onto the site because of the mess. While their previous landlord had issues keeping his junk off their back section, the new 100% vacant property owned by an overseas investor should pose no such problems. We could park opposite them in the airfield, because that's them just standing there. But on arrival, Holly finds her momentarily happy tenants unhappy. How are you? Oh, not stressed? Not good? Yes. The gate is too narrow for the trucks. Everything what we plan to do is very hard. It's always we probably unlucky person. Holly's come too far to give up now. It's on the phone to fire up a digger driver. In Dairy Flat, these tradesmen outnumber cleaners two to one. Bruce, Bruce. Can you whip out that fence post? The gate post will not budge. <laughs> Meanwhile, the trucks are here and these guys charge by the hour. The A team needs a plan B. Guys, stop. Stop. We have different idea. In the nick of time, Polish Andy remembers where he left his chainsaw. I will be very happy. Probably will be celebrate all the evening with a bottle of wine. I just think these drivers are amazing. How he gets that through such a small, tight gap into there. I'm just in awe at their driving ability. The house could not fall on me. Holly's definitely made things happen today and made some new friends in the process.
Holy help is very precious if we're talking about and the communication with another landlord uh, when we're looking for something new, an agreement, a typical law case. That's why we appreciate so much. Yeah, very successful day, yep. All good. Everybody's happy. Tomorrow's back off to work and Angie's just going to carry on overseeing everything until it's all, all tidied up. Tracy Lee from A Grade Property Management is heading back to the rental where a group of previously clean living young men have let standards slip. There was a burn mark in the carpet that I've had patched and I'm checking the garden. Between working and inside and the games area, the garden's just got out of control. Upon arrival, Trace is hoping to see a marked improvement. Knowing young men as she does, she's not expecting miracles. And we're off to a great start, look. The tenants have rolled up their sleeves and got their hands dirty in the garden. This was completely full of milkweed right up to the side of the house, and it's all flat and ready for spraying. Tracy Lee is tickled pink. Pink's my favourite colour, can't you tell? It's nice and bright and happy, warm, it's beautiful. This area is now a lovely private courtyard. With summer coming on, leisure activities and entertaining have a new home. Inside and upstairs, the good news just keeps on coming. Oh, wow, the, the layer said the carpet was a different colour, and it, and it is. But I guess we can do something with that. Not a perfect colour match, but quite serviceable. I've got a little carpet match machine. I can probably dilute some bleach and drop that down to match the rest. With the mouldy green patio swept and cleaned, these tenants are Tracy's trophy tenants. Today, everyone's a winner. And the vacuum. Fabulous. What more could you want? Very happy. Good Girls property managers Prue and Michelle's battle with their terrible tenant has reached its inevitable conclusion. The locks are changed, the tenant's out, the place is clean, and now they're off to visit the new tenants, a charming elderly couple and their adult daughter. And she's home. Lovely, shiny. And she's mowed the bloody lawn. Hello. Hello, lovely lady. Ooh. Very good, darling. Very good. While youth adjacent Michelle chews the fat with the daughter, Prue explains the joys of the modern heat pump with her parents. Now they can be warm when it's cool and cool when it's warm. They're like a back to front refrigerator. Oh. So the longer you leave it on, the better price. But that's enough chit chat. How about the rest of the property? Excuse me, now we want to see the toilet. And we've got the new bathroom. Oh, I need the shower. The shower. Yeah, this yeah. is it. Oh, my golly, this is good. I've got the new floor. Fabulous. Very good. Yeah. And a big pen so you can write your novels in the shower. My, uh, yeah. Grandson. Beautiful. <laughs> How about that lav in the laundry? Last time it was worse than a toilet at a three-day all-you-can-eat chili con can festival. Now I think this is good, it is. Michelle. It's not, it's not 100%. I think <laughs> this toilet is actually as a cistern chapel. Cantabrians love cricket, and this was a tenancy test match that could have gone either way. But once again, the good girls knocked it out of the park. Lovely, aren't they? Really lovely. Really lovely. And the sun's out. God, I love it. 